all German officers and warders feared him. This is a story about a Soviet boxer imprisoned in a concentration camp who was able to demonstrate a great fight against a German champion. The name of this boxer was Andrei Borzenko. As a prisoner of the Buchenwald concentration camp, he was able to hold a brilliant duel against the German heavyweight champion named Willy. Borzenko became the prototype of the protagonist of the popular book The Ring Behind Barbed Wire, the author of which was G.I. Sviridov. It is worth noting that the former Buchenwald prisoner was the boxing champion among the Southern Republics in 1939. For the first time, the writer met Andrei Borzenko at the first post-war championship. Then he came to the competition as a team boxer, in which, besides him, there were also Uzbek and German. As a result, it was the German who managed to reach the final and enter the ring against Borzenko. When the duel began, Sviridov played the role of the German second. An interesting fact is that at that time the writer had not heard anything about the former prisoner boxer, the winner of the German champion in the concentration camp. Already at the beginning of the fight, Borzenko began to box in a tough form against his opponent. He literally beat the unfortunate German, who was knocked down nine times. Sviridov then could not understand why Borzenko fought with such aggression with his teammate. It is curious that after this fight the German had to leave boxing. Only after the end of the Soviet boxing championship, Georgi Sviridov understood the reason for such aggression on the part of Andrei Borzenko. He also learned that in his career there were 80 victories in a concentration camp. Most of the fights were held against German athletes. Let's take a closer look at the biography of the Soviet prisoner boxer who defeated the German champion. In the ranks of the Red Army, Borzenko left already as a master of sports in boxing in heavy weight. A month later, in one of the battles, he was wounded in the leg, and even later he was wounded in the arm. However, the injuries turned out to be compatible with the service, which is why he continued to defend his homeland from the German invaders. In September 1941, a Soviet boxer received another wound, which soon led to a loss of consciousness right on the battlefield. As a result, he was taken prisoner. An interesting fact is that when he ended up in the German concentration camp Stalin, he managed to escape twice. However, each time he was found and sent back to the camp. Later, André, along with other prisoners, was sent to the notorious Buchenwald concentration camp. It is curious that there was a strict hierarchy, established by the German leadership. The leaders were criminals, after them came foreigners, then Russians, and Jews closed the staircase. Once one of the criminals hit a Soviet boxer with a truncheon, wanting to hasten him to line up. However, Borzenko immediately sent his offender into a deep knockout. After this incident, none of the criminals dared to beat the Russian prisoners. On weekends, criminals usually organized boxing tournaments for the amusement of the Germans. As a rule, it was the caste leaders who more often won the battles because they ate much better. The winners got an extra ration of bread, and the defeated prisoners were simply taken to the crematorium. At that time, the Soviet athlete met the Dutch boxing trainer, Harry Meideldor, who was also in a concentration camp. A traditional boxing match was to take place next weekend. The first to enter the ring was the German ex-champion of Hamburg in boxing, imprisoned in a concentration camp for repeated robberies and murders. Go out against a huge robber, whose weight exceeded 100 kilograms, none of the prisoners expressed any desire. Seeing this, the German guards decided to give the winner not only a loaf of bread, but also a can of stew. As a result, Borzenko came up to the ring with his coach, showing a desire to box with the German. After that, gloves were put on the prisoners and the fight was announced. The bald German, whose head was covered with scars after street fights, immediately rushed at the Soviet boxer. He wanted to deliver one powerful blow and knock out his opponent. However, his plan was not destined to come true. Despite the fact that Andre was 20 kilograms lighter than his opponent, he skillfully repulsed all the enemy's attacks. The thug began to clinch and even hit the Soviet athlete with his elbow a couple of times, but the judge did not notice this. The warders and other employees of the concentration camp began to bet on the German, thinking that sooner or later he would inflict a crushing blow on the Russian boxer. 
ultimately, the first round never revealed a winner. From the first seconds of the second round, the German launched a swift attack on Borzenko. Unable to achieve success, he hit a Soviet boxer in the groin, after which he bent over from unbearable pain. The bald criminal rushed to finish off the opponent, despite the objections of his coach. The referee pulled the German to the side and waited until Andre took the stand. As soon as the referee allowed the fight to continue, Borzenko approached the opponent and carried out a two, hitting his left in the liver and right in the jaw. In the next second, the German was already in a deep knockout. Most of the audience began to applaud the Soviet boxer, including the concentration camp guards. After that, Andre spent many more battles, gaining confident victories in each of them. Over time, at the request of the commandant of the concentration camp, the heavyweight champion of Germany among the SS troops, and the German Wehrmacht, Willy, was invited to Buchenwald. This fight was supposed to be a real event. It was seen as a sacred duel between a Nazi and a Soviet soldier. According to the regulations, sparring was supposed to last six rounds of five minutes each. All the top leadership came to look at the confrontation between the Russian and the German. An interesting fact is that the head of the concentration camp himself was the judge. At exactly 18 o'clock a.m. gong sounded, signaling the beginning of the battle. A tall and sturdy German rushed at Andre, working with both hands at the same time. Initially, the Soviet boxer put blocks, fleeing from enemy attacks. The audience frantically supported Willy with applause and loud shouts. In the second round, both athletes evenly exchanged blows, although the German was noticeably more active than at the start of the fight. Borzenko managed to deftly evade Willy's punches, running around the perimeter of the ring. In the third round, the German slowed down, deciding to wait for the right moment to deliver the decisive blow. In the fourth round, Willy began to use his elbows, striking them on the head of the Soviet boxer. Naturally, the referee was not going to stop the fight, but only made remarks to his compatriot. However, when the enraged German once again heard a remark from the judge, he hit him, after which he lost consciousness. Then the German rushed at Borzenko, forgetting about protecting his jaw. As a result, our boxer, slightly crouching down and making a sharp lunge forward, struck a blow to the opponent's jaw with his left hand. In a moment Willie was deeply knocked out next to the referee. There was complete silence in the hall. The coach called Andre to him and with him retired to the prisoners. All the prisoners of the concentration camp quickly fled to their barracks, fearing that the humiliated guards would open fire on them. It still remains a mystery why the Nazis did not deal with the Soviet prisoner boxer who knocked out their champion. A couple of years later, when the Red Army began to gain one after another at the front, it freed all the prisoners of the Buchenwald concentration camp. The surviving Germans were taken en masse or shot on the spot. After his release, the trainer of the Soviet boxer Harry Meideldor left along with the Americans, who by that time had united with our troops. An interesting fact is that Gary offered our champion to go to him in the Netherlands, but he preferred to return to his family in Uzbekistan. Soon he had a conversation with Soviet commanders, who believed in his story. As a result, he continued to fight for the motherland until the end of World War II, after which he went to Tashkent. At home, he met with family father, mother and sister. Later, the Soviet champion entered the medical institute, choosing the profession of a surgeon, and then married. For a long time, he did not tell anyone about his stay in the concentration camp, and only after Stalin's death he decided to reveal the truth to close relatives. Shortly before the collapse of the USSR, the Soviet boxer was nevertheless issued a certificate of participant of the Great Patriotic War, although before that he was repeatedly summoned for interrogations. Andrei Borzenko has lived a rich life working as a surgeon and is highly respected. According to the recollections of those who knew him, he was a very kind and sympathetic person. Andrei Borzenko died in 1992.